Hello guys, this is Tom from Kudosalt.com. Today I'm going to do a review on these boots right in front of me. These are John Lofgren Desert Boots. And I wanted to get Desert Boots for a while. I already tried Clark's, but it, was, it wasn't that comfortable to me. And I know that you guys have seen my Boric Desert Boots, I would say, but as a mock toe design. But I wanted to like, you know, classic sandy suede desert boots for a while. Now I've been just looking around. And to be honest, I saw these online before. Um, they were too expensive. They're like 300 pounds or 500 dollars around that. They were too expensive for my liking. I didn't really know what they were and how good they were. And I saw desert boots from The Crown, Northampton. I know that some people actually did a review on those. I think it was Rosanville that they cut them in half or something. Um, but they are also 270 pounds. So it to be honest, it was too expensive for me for just a pair of desert boots because I can just buy other boots that I I prefer and then do review on them and then wear them more often. So luckily I found these on the market. Market is like a second-handed retailer. So you can buy second-handed clothes or boots on there. And they are based in the UK, USA, and Australia. If you guys know Market, they do sell genuine stuff. So check it out. I don't know about like Nike and stuff, but for these kind of boots, they do sell genuine stuff like Red Wing or, or Trickers. Or I can, I always uh, look on the Viberg as well. I always look on that too, to see if they do have any other good deals. So I picked these up for 140 pounds, I believe, on market, which is like half price or much, much, much less than what it what it cost initially. And then and then the photo on market looked pretty good, so I decided to buy them. And to be honest, I'm very happy with these purchases. I'm not going to talk about the brand itself, but I just want to talk about the boots today and tell you guys how they are. So John Lofgren, despite the name is a Japanese boot maker. I know that uh, there are quite a few of Japanese artisans who are making boots or shoes and they are very, very good quality, but they're very expensive. And a brief history of Desert Boots. So Desert Boots became historically popular during the desert expansion campaign during World War II. Uh, while British Army was in Egypt, Libya and Tunisia, boots were uh, worn, but the they're too hot and they were not as good. So these boots that are low cut and boots with crepe outsoles were worn because of the weather. Uh, they're easy to walk in and they were less hot for them as well. But of course, these kind of chucker boots or desert boots were really like popular and you can't really tell who made first chucker boot because it's a very simple shoe design. Moving on to reviewing the shoes. So the upper is made of Japanese cow suede and the color is sand. You can see all the nap on here and the leather itself is pretty thick. Um, I like it. The inside has leather lining and the suede feels just like rough out leather in my opinion. And it feels very, very sturdy. Behind the tongue, you are able to see John Lofgren logo with Made in Japan written on it. So yes, these are Made in Japan. The upper design is very similar to other regular desert boots like Clark's or any other brands that you can think of. Um, has two eyelets and the two main parts that are made of is the vamp part and the neck part of the shoes. So it goes around like that and there's a vamp. Also, it's pretty much two piece uh, of, of, of leather construction and they're stitching all around here as you can see it's all double stitched compared to my previous video that I made they're all single stitched on the neck and the vamp these are all double stitched which means they are a bit more durable in my opinion and unlike Clark Desert Boots the toe box is structured and the heel counter is very good at supporting the heel because there is a heel counter as well. I guess this could be a personal choice in terms of comfort but I found myself enjoying this kind of support on the toe and the heel. Inside you can see they added another layer of suede. This is probably for comfort and prevent extra blisters from causing. Let's move on to outsoles. It would not be called Desert Boots if the outsoles were not crepe soles. These desert boots have genuine crepe outsoles and also the construction method is stitched down method as you can see. Clark's desert boots are also made of stitched down but yet yeah, I, I feel like this is a bit more uh, dense compared to Clark's that I had before. Unfortunately I don't have it with me. Uh, sorry for the dirty outsole but you guys probably know already that crepe outsoles are terrible to keep clean. These will collect all the dusts and junks and also since it's natural rubber it will get dirty quickly. 
Also during the summer, it's terrible because it can melt a bit and it can get sticky. I'm sure you guys have a similar experience with this. But crepe soles are very comfortable and this kind of casual look, um, you know, it's very different from artificial rubber in my opinion. And also the midsole is a just piece of leather which also adds to the stability and the durability of the shoes. Something you guys probably been waiting for is about sizing. So these are size 11E, as you can see. Um, my Braddock size is between 11 and 11 and half, and my width is between D and E, UK standard. And I did some research and I saw that you should take half a size down from your Braddock size, which I did. So they are 11. So the length is perfect and the width is perfect. Um, I know that this E does not mean that's wide width, it's just the standard width. It, they just use E as their standard. But yeah, the width is perfect, the length is perfect. So I would say go half a size down from your product size. These are not for people with wide, wide feet. These are for people, um, well, I do have like between E and E, e D and E. So um, I think I would say go, f I think these are for people who have standard width up to between D and E like, like I do. So overall, to be honest, I really enjoyed wearing these and they are very comfortable too. I can see where they have put more effort in for the design, construction, and the material they have used is fantastic. Um, to be honest, compared to, which I do not have at the moment, unfortunately, compared to Clark's boots, I do agree that these should be more expensive than Clark's desert boots because Clark's is basically just suede leather on top and crepe outsole but I can see that they put more effort into it. Uh, that's what I mean by effort, construction, and material into it. And these are Japanese cowhide as well. So in my head, it makes sense that these are a tad bit more expensive. I don't necessarily agree with their current price point. It's really expensive. I, I said 300 pounds or $500. They're really expensive. But if they're ever on discount, grab them because I think they are very, very good. And one other really positive thing I don't want to mention about these boots is that they seem to have some kind of shank inside. And you can't really tell from the outside or on the side, obviously. You probably have to cut them in half to see. And it does not have any information online, but I noticed it when I wore them for a long period of time. Usually desert boots are like this. Well, not these, but uh, my other desert boots that I have in Clark's, they do give me a lot of discomfort when I wear them for a long period of time because they don't have any shank. So if you guys don't know what shanks are, well, if you do know what shanks are, skip this part, but if you don't know what shanks are, so basically they're there to support your feet and it prevents from shoes collapsing this way basically. And I'm very, very heavy. I'm around 109 kilos at the moment. I got heavier, um, but if, if you're a heavy guy like me, if you wear something like this for a long period of time, this will collapse, like this part will collapse. And these did not collapse. I wore them to work a few times as well. And I think they do have shanks in them to support uh, my feet with also a bit of an arch support as well. So this is one of the best positive thing I noticed about these because I did not expect it and they were there. So, you know, this is a short term review on these. Um, let me know on the comment section, please. Is it worth it to you? Do you like desert boots? And do you, would you pay an extra money for desert boots that have a bit more stability, better material, better construction? Or would you just stay with normal desert boots that you have and you know, like Clark's desert boots? By all means, they are in good quality. Uh, people don't like it recently because they are decreasing in their quality. I, I know the Clark's desert boot had recently gone through an acquisition again and probably they try to cut costs or whatever, but would you pay a bit more premium for a better quality desert boots? Let me know in the comment section, guys. Thank you for watching this video. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment anything if you know about the boots or if you have any, or if you have any question about the boots. I'll come back with more videos next time.